Hey again, and welcome back. Uh, some of you know that my lights that are just above here, actually you can see the reflection here, there's quite a few broken sections. And so I figured um, I would use my sponsorship with PCB Way to fund some new lights. So I bought these, I think these are 5370 SMD high CRI LEDs. And I got, I made some custom PCBs, which you guys can use as well uh, from PCB Way to make myself these little panels. So let's take a look at what I came up for a design. Um, just a fair warning, this will be my first time messing with um, a fully solder paste um, PCB. This will be my first time doing a reflow on a hot plate, which is what I'm gonna be using. Um, this solder paste is super old. This is uh, 6337. And uh, this stuff is very old, probably mixing it a little bit with uh, some flux. Um, if these things don't come out well, that's too bad. So this is uh, just messing with the aluminum PCBs from PCB Way. Hopefully, with 12 um, LEDs on this only, I will be able to just use the aluminum on the back here as heat sink and not need any additional heat sinking. This is also the first time I get a solder stencil. So I'm pretty excited. It looks like this board that they packed it in is like the backing board for when they um, for when they drill PCBs because there's all a bunch of little drill holes. Ooh. Very pretty. Look at that. So this should fit exactly on top of one of these. Let's see if I can line it up properly. There we go, yeah. And then basically the idea is that you squeegee solder paste on top of these spots and that's, you know, that's how you solder. Neat. So I'm gonna get myself set up here and I will bring you back. So what I've done here is I have my, oh, okay. So I put three PCBs, I put them um, solder mask down. Uh, so basically these PCBs here are just to lift up the stencil so that it's the same height as these, as this PCB, which will be receiving the paste. Um, then what I, what I did is I also made sure it would keep this PCB in the same spot. So I can just put another PCB in there and it'll always end up at the exact same spot. Then I carefully aligned the holes here um, and then taped down the, the stencil. So basically now we can just mix up some solder paste and then we'll be able to just, you know, take this one out, put this one on and make a couple. Now I think I'm gonna start by um, solder pasting maybe, uh, I don't know, three or so, uh, and then seeing if that works. Hopefully it'll work. And yeah, the reason I've got this piece of wood is that uh, my mat on my bench is no longer flat. This piece of wood is much flatter. Uh, so all we have to do now is mix up some solder paste and then apply it. Why did I say that I'm mixing solder paste? Well, this solder paste was the cheapest I could find on eBay, and it is now Geez, many years old. Um, typically, you're supposed to use solder paste um, within a you know a short amount of time since you got it, but I did not do that, and I'm not about to throw this away. So the main complaint about solder paste is that it loses a lot of its um, flux. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of solder paste in this shot glass here and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of additional flux. Then I'm going to use, um, I don't have a proper, uh, uh, what you call it, scraper, paint scraper type thing. So I will just apply it with a removal tool, with an opening tool, and we're gonna see how well that works. Um, I sincerely apologize to the people who do this for a living and who know what they're doing, uh, that is not me, but that doesn't stop me from trying and having fun. So this is a plastic uh, sort of opening tool. I'm just going to mix the uh, paste 
with the new flux. We get a good mix. I've actually done a trial run on the video where I took a look at that hot plate and it seemed to solder just fine so we will see. Alright now actually you know what I might try applying it with this. So now all you have to do since the holes are well lined up is you just kind of scrape over like this like that and that is enough solder paste. Again, strong apologies to those of you who know what you're doing. I'm just making it up as I go along. Just kind of squeegeeing in into those holes. Whoops, squeegee a little bit too much. Just going to grab a little bit more, like so. It is applying solder. And again, I've got nothing to lose because I've got a lot of boards. I can buy more. And this solder is like years old. Okay, that looks about right. I'm going to lift the stencil up and we'll check our work here. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. It looks a little thin in some places, but there is solder there. I'm going to set this aside. We're going to do a couple more and then I'll bring you back when I do my manual PNP. That doesn't look too bad at all. We have a little bit of um, sort of displaced pads on that side, but that's not too bad. Um, now, first components I'm going to set. These are the uh, non-problematic ones. So these are 100 ohm resistors. Uh, these are size 0805. So they're a little bit small. Uh, I have two in parallel per uh, series string. And so the dissipation will be shared between them. I don't think that was entirely necessary, but I figured why not? So it'll be eight per board. I'm doing this unmagnified at the moment. I'm just using my naked eyes. It's not ideal. But 0805 is fairly large compared to what um, people often do, especially with solder paste. There we go. Okay, next one is a bit more challenging. So this is the hard part because these LEDs are polarized, but now just notice there's a little dot there on the LED. I'm going to use these tweezers that um, Johnny Bergdahl had sent me uh, to see, oh, making sure I'm not shorting anything, see which polarity is which. Looks like the dot might be negative. Yeah, so the dot is negative. And so as long as I pay attention and keep putting the dot on the negative end, everything should be fine. So there's the LED. Yeah, probably best to handle it like this. So positive is on this side, negative is on this side. Just set these down very carefully. Give them a little squish. So these LEDs, if you can see the bottom of them there, they have um, a heat sink area, which is that kind of that big center piece there. And that heat sink area is coupled to the, hold on a sec, 
positive. There we go, yeah. So it's coupled to the positive. So it is that way on my design as well. I had to custom make these footprints. Oh, I smeared it a little bit. So thankfully, uh, if you smear a little bit, it's not the end of the world because the solder resist really doesn't like solder. So the solder should ball up and move around. But that also means that I should uh, heat this up quite a bit in order to get it to, uh, to you know, properly pull together. But we're going to see how that works out in practice. Oh, I don't want to smear it that much. You know, theoretically, this is easier um, than it seems because theoretically, the uh, solder will pull the LEDs into orientation. But um, just, you know, this is my first go. I don't want to mess it up. And also, if this goes well, I want to make a couple more of these designs. A little bit of the design considerations while we're here. Um, I have mounting holes on the back. Uh, they're for the 5630 LEDs, so that's what these are. Um, and you see the 60 by 60 mounting holes is written right on the PCB. So you don't need to measure, you know, in, in a year or two years from now, if I want to make a, a new articulated arm, for example, to hold this thing in place, it's written right on the PCB, so you don't have to measure it. And also, if you guys order your own, which you can, link in the description. Um, whoop, there we go. If you guys order your own, then you know what size of mounting holes to put in. So that looks pretty good. What do, what do you think? I'm going to do the other two, and then I'm going to set up to bake these things. Got the boards all assembled, and I've got the hot plate here heated to 240C. I don't know if it's going to require that much, but that's what I'm going to try setting it at. And I made some marks here because I will bring in the um, microscope. There we go, and go. That looks like it's reflowed already. So I just have a little uh, cool off zone on this side. I'm just gonna let the heat penetrate it a little bit more and then I should be able to just slide it right off to the cool off zone. All right. And that's it. Now all we have to do is wait till they cool down and test to see if they're successful. So here are the finished and cooled boards. Um, all that's left now is to test them. I have my uh, Redin RD6018, which I love so much. Um, and I'm just gonna power them up. I have a half amp current limit. I don't think each panel will take half an amp, but you know, if I have to change it, I'll change it. So here we go. No, uh, it's 230 milliamps at uh, 12 volts. So these are all working. Also all working. Oh, you guys can't really see that. Can you see it now? There we go. And these. Hey, looks like every dog has its day. All right, so this is not, they're not super powerful. Um, I, am, I am running them a bit cool, right? So this is actually uh, under three watts per panel. So I could run these quite a bit harder. I wonder if I should. I'm gonna up the voltage here to um, 24 volts. I set one amp. Let's see if that works now. Oh yeah. That is, that is a full amp. Ooh, that is quite bright. That's running at uh, 23 watts. That's way too much. Let's try it at 18 volts. There we go. There's 10 watts at 18 volts. That's quite bright and that's not too bad. But I did want to run these a little bit cooler. So that's why I put 100 ohm resistors there, uh, giving us 50 ohms of total resistance per leg. 
because I want these to run cool. So now the next step is to uh, set this up, run them uh, over an extended period of time and see if they warm up. But now that I see they're under three watts, I don't think they're gonna warm up much. Well, um, I tried running it at its, uh, just at 12 volts. And honestly, the back here never got above 20 degrees Celsius. So 2.75 watts is way too little. I can pump it way up higher than that. I upped the current a little bit. Uh, right now it's running at uh, 360 milliamps at 14 volts um, across all of them, obviously. So you have to divide that by four to get what each LED is having across it. And now it's at five watts and the, um, the back here is at 30 degrees Celsius. So it is still really cold. I ran it also at 18 volts and um, 10, almost like 11 watts. And the back stayed at uh, 51 C. So still cooler than usually LEDs. You like to run them cooler, but they can usually tolerate like ADC, no problem. So I think the plan is to make a revision two with twice the amount of LEDs on here, and also to do a little bit of experimentation on pumping up the current. I did go, uh, I wanted to keep these cool, so I'll very likely be using these the way they are, or maybe trying to bring the current up a bit. But uh, yeah, that's, that's it. This is gonna be usable lighting. And um, for much cheaper than, you know, LED panels. So thanks for watching. If you want to get your own, check the links in the description. Um, the boards will be available at PCBWay.com. Thanks for watching.